It is the Brock and Salk Show. And Jaron Reed, Seahawks defensive tackle, back with us. New and old defensive tackle. What's it like, man? What's it like being back? Man, it's a it's like a breath of fresh air. You know, I get to come back to where it all started and, you know, hopefully go chase one of these rings. Um, you know, that's a dream, especially to win it where we started at. But that's just a goal that, you know, that I want to get to. So you're a free agent this off season. Do yeah. you talk to your agent? I don't know who your agent is. Do you talk to your agent and say, hey, I kind of want to go back to Seattle? Uh, or do they call you? <laughs> or are you like, hey, I'll go wherever? Like, how does that process work? Um, well, you know, afterwards, uh, you know, we were trying to win it there. And uh, everything was done in Green Bay. Um, of course, I threw it out there, you know. And I, I knew that, you know, some teams would – need some defensive tackle positions to be filled. And, you know, we were just weighing out our options. And, of course, out of options, to see also was first on my list, of course. And, uh, you know, that's kind of where I wanted to be. Yeah. And, you know, we were, we were uh, able to make it happen. That's pretty cool. Green Bay last year, I'm sure it was cold. Practice, a little different. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's got to be a strange vibe there last year, no? I mean, Aaron Rodgers is sort of, is he going to play? Is he not going to play? And yeah. then, like, sort of, what's the future? Did that kind of hang over that team? Um, you know, I think it was a lot to play in the last year. And, uh, you know, you could kind of feel it just uh, from my own opinion. But, you know, we weathered every storm. You know, we started off pretty rocky. And uh, we found a way to win and to end up to be able to play into the playoffs. But, you know, it didn't go as planned. And, you know, well, I'm here now, and that's all that matters. <laughs> you've, been, you've been around some quarterbacks in your career, huh? Oh, yeah, I've played with some great ones. Man, I was just thinking about it. So you start off your career with Russ, yeah. right? You go to Kansas City, you play with Mahomes for a couple of years. Yeah. Then you go to Green Bay last year. You, and now, I know they're not throwing you the ball necessarily. Yeah. I mean, you're competing against them. But how were those three guys, Aaron Rodgers, obviously the third, similar and different? Um, you know, everybody has their own different type of characteristics and different type of play styles. Um, Russ, you know, was a great quarterback. You know, obviously he did a lot for this franchise. Um, Pat Mahomes is very different. Everything you see is real. It's real. He doesn't practice. It's all day. It's like secondhand. And, you know, A-Rod, that's, 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 that's for me, like, it was just amazing to see, you know, how smart. Not to take anything away from the other guys, mm -hmm. but, you know, he's very smart. And, you know, the game is almost slowed down to him, and it's, and it's very different. Um, you know, I, I think, you know, Aaron Rodgers is an amazing quarterback, you know, overall. And um, the things he's able to do with the ball, the way he sees the field is, is, is crazy. What's the most incredible thing you saw Patrick Mahomes do? Um, I think it was either we were in practice or a game, and he fumbled. The, the, the snap was fumbled, but he kind of, like, dribbled it off the ground and then picked it up and then – was running and tossed it sideways on a dime in the back of the end zone to Tyreek. That was crazy. That's just a, I mean, just a different level it, of athleticism. It's, yeah, right? it's almost like it's just like you know how like NFL blitz was back in the day. <laughs> it's almost like that. So what'd you learn? You go, you go away here. You were here for the whole first part of your career. You leave. You go to Kansas City. Now it's been a couple of years. You and Frank are there together. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you guys talked about how it was different and compared yeah. notes, etc. What, 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 what did you learn along the way? Um, that Andy Reid is one of the greatest coaches to ever coach this game. He's old school, very old school. Um, and you know, actually, Green Bay was similar to here with uh, you know, what's being preached. You know, the philosophies of the team, um, the meetings, um, you know, just uh, the co uh, competition. What do you mean you he know, was old compete. school? Go back. What, what what does that mean? He was old school. What does no, that mean to you? Like like playing for Andy Reid was like I felt like. We were playing back when he was coaching for the Eagles. You know, it, it, was, it was old school. You know, it it really brought, you know, just that football atmosphere back. Like training camp was away at another place. And, you know, it was just – it kind of felt like I was in college again. Huh. <laughs> well, I was thinking about the coaches you've played for. I mean, you get Nick Saban, Pete Carroll, Andy Reid. Yeah. I mean, how about this guy? Like everywhere yeah. you go, you end up with a great <laughs> quarterback or a great coach or both. It's greatness all around. We're so, destined to be great. So tell me about those three guys. And and you know, again, it's sort of the same question I asked with the quarterbacks. But Pete Carroll, Andy Reid, and Nick Saban. Um, one thing I can say that with every coach that you just named, they all want to bring out the best in their players, and they all want the best for their players, and they all want everybody to compete and be great. And that's all you can ask from as a coach. And as players, we got to go out there and deliver. Um, we got to just trust in them and trust in the process and trust what they're coaching. 
and, you know, just take that to the field every day and go out there on that practice field so we can make the game easy. Who of those three coaches, who are the most similar to each other? Who are the most similar? Um, that's tough. I mean, because every one of them has something different about them. And, you know, Coach Saban is a whole – that's a whole – all right, so, all right, so, so let's do it this, <laughs> so let's do it this way. What did you learn from Coach Saban? Um, for one, how to be a pro. Uh, he prepared us to get ready for the next level. Um, you know, everything I learned from him was, especially even off the field, how to be held accountable, how to be responsible, you know, how to hold myself and the organization that we play for to a high standard, such as, you know, we were carrying the A, we carry the A everywhere we go. You know, just as here, we're Seahawks. We carry it everywhere we go. And, you know, just as we left the field, um, Coach Pete said that. Now, those are things that, you know, you just learn, especially just learning from college, you know, coming here to the league, I was well prepared for. So then what did you learn from Pete once you got here? Everything. You know, how to practice, how to practice fast, how, how, to, how to believe in yourself, how to compete, you know, how to be relentless, how to never give up, how to always keep hope. Because there's been plenty of games. You know, just sometimes, especially like playing games, you may think it's going one way and you never know how it ends. And you've always got to keep believing and you got to keep competing. And that is so true. And, you know, you got to keep on going because you never know what will happen at any moment in any down, in any play, in any game. How about Andy Reid? What would you learn from him? Same way. Greatness. And once again, greatness. How to endure, how to persevere. Um, you know, just how to unlock your mind when you're tired. You know, how to – play the game as it's, as it's being dealt, you know, how to be physical, just everything. Wow. It's quite a journey. We're talking to Jaron Reed uh, here on CL Sports on 710 Brock and Salk. How are you a different player now today when we see you this year than when you left here? Um, you know, leaving, uh, it was, you know, because I was still kind of young. So going to Kansas City, I had to learn a whole new style, a coaching style of football from my position coaches, um, from the defense coordinator. It was all different. So I had to learn a different way and I had to play that they wanted me to play. And um, you know, taking that and going to Green Bay and it was kinda mixed back then mixed back into what I was being taught beforehand and so just meshing that all together and bringing that all together. You know, I think coming in here now I'm a better, well all around player. Um the game has slowed down tremendously for me. Um, you know, and I'm just trying to be the greatest I can be for, you know, the Seahawks and you know, go out there and hopefully, you know, play my best. And it's, I it's interesting to hear you say more of an all-around player. When I think of you, that's sort of what I think of. You might not be the best run stopper in the league or the best pass mm -hmm. rushing defense attack on the mm -hmm. league, but there weren't usually too many guys who could do all of those things as yeah. well as you. How do you get more well-rounded? Is it two gap versus one gap? I mean, like what makes you more well-rounded? I think just playing in every different kind of scheme and – Every different coach's philosophy without with inside the scheme and position coaches wise it and, and how it's being taught. And you know, everybody sees something a different way. Like if I'm looking at a film, I see something one way, a coach will see it another way, then I'm like, Oh, I didn't even think of it that way. So then in my mind I just put them both together and mesh them together and then voila. <laughs> <laughs> What do you think of these new guys? I mean, you get out there, you got all these rookies running yeah. around. First of all, before I get to them, do you remember being in their shoes? Oh, I remember hands down. Cliff, I seen Cliff and Mike B yesterday. Like I said, them were my OGs. Them, them, them were my vets. And, you know, <laughs> it's just funny. Because when they came out, it was kind of like, uh, I feel like I need to take a back seat for a minute. But I have Just remember. yesterday you did? Yes. <laughs> but I have remember. Now I'm the vet. <laughs> <laughs> well, you don't need to take it from them Yeah, anymore. yeah, yeah. I, I'm just messing around. But, um. Were you yeah. nervous? At, I mean, you kind of around those guys who had won Super Bowls here, and that was one of yeah. the things we had heard is that maybe it was challenging for some of the next generation yeah. to come in here and feel like you could start to own the place when you look over and there's Bobby and there's Cliff and there's, yeah. you know, Earl, whomever. You know, well, coming in as a rookie, I had to earn my right. And um, they brought the best out of me every day. It was tough. It was hard. But I trusted them, and they trusted in me once we got going. And I knew that I was going to be playing. And so I just had to be on my P's and Q's. And I was telling one of the young guys the other day, I used to watch everything they did, and I didn't tell them. So whatever they did to take care of their body, I was going to emulate that. I was going to just steal it from them, you know, do the same thing. Which, then if I had any questions, I would ask them, man. 
at the end of the day, everything they did was to help me become a better all around player. And, you know, well, today's game has changed a little bit with the rules and everything, but, you know, I came in with the last of the Mohicans. So <laughs> we were still playing real football. This is real football, but, you know, it was still a little, you know, who, high intensity. Who, who was that? You said Mike B. and Cliff. Who else? Uh, Mike B., Cliff Abel, Tyba Rubin, Tony McDaniel, Jordan Hill was here, Brian Robinson was here. Um, and you just watching I them. Go on and, all, and you just on. sort of like creeping around watching like, just, all right, what's just, that guy doing over yeah, there? Yeah, I wasn't creeping here. I was, if they was in the tub, I was in the tub. <laughs> I was time to see how long they was in there, and boom. All right. They went in the summer. They went in the stretch, got stretched. I'm trying to figure out what they were doing, what they were working on, what they were loosening it up. Seriously, but, you know, it just helps, you know, and it helps you learn how to be a pro, learn how to be a professional football player, not just a football how player. How much of that time was Mike B. talking? Well, I, I mean, that's, <laughs> all of it, <laughs> all of that time. Yeah, but everything he said made sense. Believe it or not, it was some crazy stuff. It was always like a cryptic <laughs> message behind it. <laughs> so now, tell me about these new guys. Now that you're in their position, what have you seen from some of the rookies out there? Um, this group of guys, uh, these group of guys I seen, they're ready to work. They listen. They don't complain. They put their hard hats on and come out here every day, ready to work. I actually like this group a lot. Because they got some fire in them. You know, if you tell them something one time, they can go back and try to fix it. And you can tell they're putting emphasis on what uh, what we're trying to coach, up, coach them up on and what they're doing. Start with Cam Young. I mean, I saw you guys out there kind of next to each other. You have similar builds, not exactly yeah. the same. Yeah. How much are you guys sort of mimicking each other and doing some of the same yeah, things? I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm going to make sure that I get in their ear and try to give them every piece of knowledge that I have to give them everything that I learned. Um, yeah, I don't want to hold nothing, but I want them guys to be great. We're going to need those guys to step up this year and to play. And I just want to make sure he's ready to go, you know, whatever type of help he needs as far as hand placement or coming out of his hips, steps, whatever it may be, reading the, reading the offense and seeing what's going on, um, pre-snap keys, play recognition, those type things. Mike Morris actually reminds me a little bit of Mike B. Just I was watching him uh, or listening to his press conference a week or so ago, and he's got that same kind of, you know, looking around kind of style. He's a big dude, yeah. can play a little inside, a little outside. Yeah. I, I like I like Mike a lot. I just said that the other day. Um, I think he's going to be real good because he has some – you could tell he was coached well coming out of college, you know, most guys, everybody's taught different in college. There's so many different type of coaching styles. But, you know, he's coming in ready to play. Um, I think he's got a long way to go, but it's real minimal what he has to do. His is going to be more mental than anything. So it's funny. You're in sort of a unique position. You were here when Russ was a quarterback for all of that time. You weren't here last year when things changed a little bit. And at the beginning, at this time last year, we didn't know what to think. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, nobody was the starting quarterback, so, you know, quote, unquote, there was sort of a, I say a vacuum of leadership almost a little bit, not as a bad thing, but just sort of waiting to see who would move up into mm -hmm. Russ and Bobby's shoes, et cetera. And now you come back here and Gino is established and he had a great year and he was a comeback player of the year and a pro bowler and everything else. How does that look different to, different to you? What, what is the, what is the VMAC like under Gino as the um, QB one? I'm not surprised at what Gino, the Gino's done and what he's accomplished because um, like my last I was with Gino for like two years, the last two, if I'm not mistaken. And just watch him, and he was always prepared for anything that happened. Watching him in practice, going through the mechanics, it was just like watching Russ. You know what I'm saying? Like, they're not, they're not the same player, same type of build, but I'm saying as far as how locked in, how, how ready they are, and how focused and how smart they are. So I'm not surprised at all. And, you know, when you got a quarterback like that, you know, especially that's a great locker room guy, too, and just go out there and play, guys will to go to bat for you. And so you got the trust of the team, you got trust of everybody, and that's where camaraderie comes in. That's, you know, where team chemistry comes in. And, you know, everybody got to be ready to play. You just moved back into the same house when you got here? I wish. <laughs> <laughs> it was hard to find. Hey, good, uh, good to have you back. Congratulations, and uh, we'll look forward to watching you this year. All right, appreciate it.